This is Dr. Ted Hildebrandt in his New Testament History, Literature, and Theology course, lecture number seven on discipleship in the book of Matthew. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to start today uh, working on the book of Matthew again. Uh, last time we were talking about Matthew as being methodical, uh, gathering things that Luke scatters, uh, taking the discourses and exploding the words of Mark, but yet the works of Mark describe uh, coming down and getting uh, smaller. Uh, now, what we want to do today is talk about, uh, after Matthew is methodical, we were talking about Matthew in terms of discipleship. And what we want to talk about today, or he called it apostling or discipleship, and we had talked about uh, the notion of a new righteousness that Jesus was taking things uh, that were talked about and drove them into the heart and this kind of core new righteousness that Jesus was talking about, not as the scribes and the Pharisees that like to be seen of men, but think matters of the heart, so that it was a matter of you know murder before, now it's of the heart in terms of anger, before it was in terms of adultery, and now it's in terms of lust of the eyes. And so Jesus taking the law, basically, and driving it into the heart, and this kind of righteousness that he was doing as a teacher. Now, what I want to do today is work on... Um, First of all, we'll start with the understanding of the apostles. And it's uh, pretty interesting uh, when you compare these different things, the understanding in the parables and also in Mark. And so in Matthew chapter 13, it says, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven is given to you, the apostles, but not to them. So in Matthew, he portrays the apostles as being those who understand Understanding is given to you, but not to them. In Mark chapter 4, verse 13, parallel passage, Jesus said unto them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? And so Jesus kind of rebukes the disciples then for their lack of understanding in the book of Mark. But yet in Matthew, he says, Unto you is given understanding. And so that's interesting, just the difference between Mark and the disciples not having understanding, and in Matthew, them having understanding. Similar type of thing is, is seen in the next one here. Um, don't you understand this parable? Mark says, okay. And then we go down, um, blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Many prophets wanted but couldn't see what you see. And so these passages, uh, working with Matthew and just distinguishing Matthew and Mark. Now what's interesting also is when you go to the boat and the walking on the water, let me just compare, and what I'm doing is I'm comparing Matthew and Mark and showing how Matthew is different than Mark and then saying, hmm, this is some sort of theme, this is why did Matthew shift things away from the way Mark had it. And so when they were coming in the boat, uh, remember Jesus was walking to them on the water, and in Mark it says, and they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. And in Matthew it says, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly you are the Son of God. So when Jesus gets in the boat in the one, it's saying they didn't really understand all the loaves and what was going on there. In Matthew it says, basically they worshipped him as the Son of God. So it's just it's it's very interesting then this comparison between the two and this uh, leaven uh, he talks about in terms of the leaven also let me just go back we're in the boat scene again uh, the same story in Mark uh, with the leaven in the boat Jesus instructing disciples he says do you not yet understand Mark chapter eight verse twenty one but if you go over to Matthew chapter sixteen verse twelve it says after warning. Uh, to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, he says, then they understood, then they understood that he had not, um, that he had not told them of, to beware the yeast of leaven of bread, but the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So Matthew portrays the disciples as understanding. In Mark, he says they didn't understand, and it needs to be explained to them. So it's just kind of interesting here. Um, the way the disciples are portrayed. And actually in Matthew, it doesn't portray them as so much as, as um, Mark rebukes the disciples for not understanding. Ma Ma Matthew drops that, and instead Jesus instructs, and so Jesus is portrayed in the book of Matthew as an effective teacher. 
And I think Matthew is portraying Jesus as this effective teacher, and therefore he has his disciples' understanding because Christ is an effective teacher. And so his disciples do understand because of his teaching, whereas Mark is not developing that uh, instructional aspect of the theme so much. And he shows kind of the precursor uh, where Matthew shows, you know, they may have gained understanding after the instruction of Jesus. And so it's just interesting the way the two kind of separate on this, this point. Now, how do you get these to fit together? Uh, the walking of water incident we talked about earlier, and says that when he climbed into the boat, they were completely amazed, for they had not understood. Here's Mark chapter 6, verse 50. They had not understood about the loaves, and they didn't get it. Yet in Matthew, it says, Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So in Mark, they don't get it. Yet if you look in Matthew, they do get it. And they say, as he gets into the boat, You are the Son of God. So just uh, contrasting these two things on this uh, understanding what they understood and what they didn't understand. Warning of the yeast of the Pharisees, we just mentioned that. A warning about the yeast of the Pharisees, the Pharisee story ends with a rebuke. Do you not yet understand? And that's in Mark, whereas in Matthew 16, after the warning of the Pharisees with the leaven of the bread, it says, then you, they understood that he had not told them to beware the yeast of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees. And so just contrasting these uh, parallel passages where Matthew seems to show that uh, the disciples do understand. Christ is an effective teacher. Okay, Matthew goes after more, not that they didn't understand. Matthew goes after this oligoi pistoi. Now oligoi, uh, many of you study history and things, and so you know oligoi like is oligarchy. What's an oligarchy? What's a monarchy? A monarchy is the rule of one. An oligarchy is the rule of the few, or the many. Uh, oligarchy, the rule of the few. So this is few, pistoi is faith. And so it's basically Jesus re rebukes them for having little faith in the book of Matthew. So in Matthew, they kind of get it. They understand. But what Matthew rebukes the disciples for is not that they didn't understand. It's just that they had little faith. And so Matthew brings this up in several passages. And Jesus, aware of their discussion, Jesus asked, You of little faith, why are you talking among yourselves about having no bread? So in, in Mark, it was because they didn't understand. But in Matthew, it says basically the problem was the lack of faith. They do have understanding and uh, that, that kind of a difference. So it's kind of interesting to compare the two, Matthew uh, focusing in on the faith 